we've by no means finished orchestrating this piece, but for the purposes of this tutorial video, we'll assume that this is the end of the piece. Now it's time to clean up and print and finish. First, it's a good idea to check that everything is there that we want to be there. For instance, we've marked these Resoluto at the beginning, but the flute came in later. What expression should they have? We can assume that it should be the same. I'll copy that, Control-C, <coughs> click where I want it, and paste it. Again, notice that Sibelius makes space with the piano. I've got bars at the end. Nobody needs to count those bars. We can just end it. So I'll click on the first bar, shift and click on the last bar. Then I'll use control and backspace. That is to delete bars. If I had instead simply selected and backspace, it does nothing because backspace on its own only tries to delete notes and rests. These are entire bars that we want to delete. So we have to use control and backspace. Sibelius is a very useful tool, partly in that we can read a score in transpose in non-transpose score. Let's get out of our panorama view here again. I'll go Shift and P. while at the same time we can read each different part as it should be printed. Note the three sharps and the two sharps. Each part can be viewed and printed on its own, so we can very easily print out all the parts for the different players. The score looks a little squashed to me. So I'm going to go to the Layout tab and make the staff size a bit bigger and see if Sibelius will fix it on its own. It's already looking a lot neater. We can also drag things around to, to place things differently. It's often a good idea just to check the individual parts to see that they are readable. Note the seven bars rest for the flute rather than having seven individual bars of rest. Sibelius does this automatically. We could probably make that one a bit bigger too. The converse is true if we have a very long piece. Often it will go down the whole page and onto the second page only for one line. That is a complete waste of paper and so we can simply change the staff size so that it all fits on one page. When we're happy that it's ready to print, we can go to File, Print, and print to our printer. In this case we're lucky because we've got a printer connected, but often in the computer labs you won't have a printer directly available and you'll need to take it to a print shop or somewhere else. In this case we go to File, Export and PDF. PDFs are files that can be viewed and printed from almost any computer. In this case we'll select the score and all parts into one file. It's going into my U drive, which is fine. And I'll click Export. It happens very quickly, and now I can go and find that file. There it is, the score and the parts. When I open it up, there's the score first, and then the individual parts. Notice again that the horn is in F sharp minor, where all of the other instruments are in B minor. We know that a very useful feature of Sibelius is to be able to listen to what the music should sound like and then be able to rehearse from there.
This is useful not only to us as orchestrators or composers, but to the musicians, so we should give them the same opportunity. Sibelius has written this into the program too. We can export audio. The later Sibelius can even export as an MP3. Sibelius doesn't allow us to export the audio with the, with the general MIDI configuration. We need to use the Sibelius sounds that they ship with the program. I have selected the Sibelius 7 sounds configuration so that we can hear what it sounds like. The Sibelius 7 sounds give a much more realistic feel of how it will actually sound with real instruments. Now we can export as audio to the U-Drive. And then find the MP3 and we could send it to a phone via Bluetooth or listen to it on the computer. could even send this over WhatsApp to any of the, our performers so that they can rehearse with the track before they come and play it.